Hello everybody, my name is Jared and welcome to Jared Gaming. Welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this game and seeing where it leads. So without further ado, let's dive straight back into this game. Yes, we have just finished talking to this gentleman who was really weird. Pretty sure he's the Lord Panthwick, though he denies it. Something about him just puts me on edge. Yeah, I think we need to head back to Mr. Bryden's farm to see- Oh. Hello. Hello, I've seen you once before. Hi. Am I supposed to follow her? <gasps> Excuse is? me, sir. Is this Leonard's shoulder? Finally, maybe? Yes. Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? This is the guy we were following the first night we got here in the rain at night. No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Batman? Is that... That looks like Mr. Tillett. Doesn't that look like Mr. Tillett? Like an older version of him? That's my name. Oh, marvelous. It's me, Leonard Shoulder. What? Heavens, I'd given up on finding you. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. They look exactly alike. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I Oops. offer you a thousand apologies. Nope. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I would on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. Not a chance. I spent all of my money getting here. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. We did it at least once. I'm embarrassed. I, I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. I forgive you, Please old man. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. <laughs> I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? Hmm. I have my means. I swear Miss Bateman, I had no idea. I don't really know if I trust this guy. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? <laughs> Says I've just been in bed shitting myself for a week straight. I know nothing. My father's journal was slipped under my door at the plow and furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. Do you have an alibi, old man? Probably not. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I were a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously. Especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. Like 25 years ago? I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. <laughs> I know that old codger, and he definitely you could have will. a word with him. Oh, no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. I bet you this guy's dead and he's a ghost. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee any when I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Beaulieu for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? What was with the bird? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. I don't believe in coincidences. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. <laughs> How dare you! Slap! I definitely don't trust him because he said he was bandridden, but we I'm sure he was the guy we followed through the dark and the rain that first night, which means he's lying. Hiding something, perhaps. The white glove. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. 
Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plough and furrow on the night of my arrival. How do you explain that? Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. Mm, the goblin thin. were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. What? What is a thin place? Thin place between our world and the others? A place where <laughs> one can walk between worlds. Mm. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you will know. Yes, indeed. Speaking of goblins, I seem to have remembered having a dream about one. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. Saxnot. Now we have a name. I recall one such anecdote. But Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of sow's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colourful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation <laughs> been offered for why this sack's not cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lad. Oops. Okay, well, let's tell about our dream. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. Hmm. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. No coincidences here, old man. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. I know. I don't need you telling me who I am, sir. Why do you wish to excavate the barrow? Come on, like, you're not answering any of my questions. I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? It's the name of the game! Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hernwood was sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no <laughs> heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. Hmm, they made some sort of deal with the devil, perhaps, to cure the blinded land? The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. I wonder if it's like a, a fountain of youth sort of a situation or something. Yuli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. 
You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. Hmm. It does. And it's also sort of. why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the place. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel, but did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Coincidence um, reigns mm. supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden yes. on the excavation? I would very much like to know this. I'm afraid I don't know. Useless old man. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. We're peas of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I don't think we are. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And a chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. All right, old man. Yeah, I swear he looked just like Mr. Tillett. I'm starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. Mm, exactly. I still am wondering that. All right, well, I guess let's just explore a little bit and see what we can find. The day was starting to test me. The word coincidence felt insufficient to explain what was happening. It was after that first conversation with Leonard's shoulder that I started entertaining thoughts of a truly irrational nature. What if my dream wasn't just a dream? What if it was all more than simple coincidence? What if that thing really could help my father? Oh, hello, girl. Good day, little one. Do you even speak? Hello? <laughs> Um, What's don't... this? A fiddle bow? Oh, wait, are, oh, are you holding a fiddle? There's no string. Oh, introduce ourselves, of course. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Don't think she can speak. Don't I think be think she's shy. a mute. I don't mean you any harm. She might be deaf. What are you doing out here all alone on the moors? Do you live here? Don't hmm. think we're getting any information from this girl. Would you like me to fix your bow so you can play your fiddle again? Yes? W was that a yes? Okay. Oh, keep my. Hey! <laughs> the devil's toe! She's the devil. Most that peculiar. Is her toe. Perhaps I can mend the bow for her. If memories of my childhood violin lessons serve me right, bowstring is made from animal hair coated in a waxy resin. The strings don't vibrate without it. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we do have some resin, but we don't have any animal hair. Ooh, another vision. As we're headed to Bryden's farm, it would seem. What are we doing? What Mummy? are we burning? Mummy? Um, that's unsafe. Get away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Hmm. Mummy went crazy, I think. Now go inside. <laughs> nice try, Mama, but I have a page and I will read it. Ab. Abrax. Mummy, what is this? What is she burning? Waste. Burn it. Okay. What? What does it mean? Hello, Mr. Bryden. Seems you're out and about. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss? I. 
I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. You don't know? No, I haven't changed my mind. Okay, maybe you do know. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. Try and stop me, old man. I'll just go over here and poke around your house. Can I have your bucket? This is not mine to take. Take it anyway. Screw him. Oh, a goat. <gasps> goat? Can we make a goat hair bow? <laughs> what a wild-looking thing. Okay, well, there's a goat. Don't know if that's what we need or not, but he won't let us get near him. Maybe we can show him the journal. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. Oh, come on, how about this stone with a chicken what on it? What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. Ooh. Striking a bone, Henry. My God. Wait oh. here a moment. I need to get something from inside. You see, in these games, you just have to try every item with everything. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realise that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Hmm. Now then. What? As far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Is it a chicken stone? Take a look. <gasps> a snake stone, or is it a worm stone? Incredible. I think it's a snake. Worms don't have mouths like that, I don't think. A pear. That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Convinced yet, sir? Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow. A place that is no more than dirt and stone. Uh, you're not going to give up, are you, lass? Afraid not. I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Please do. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. That's my father. Tongue-tied too, the man were. That's my father. My father. You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye, could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse riding accident. Your mother's clearly a liar. A Samuel woman. boarded up that barrow for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any- Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait. You're giving me permission to excavate. <sighs> Aye. Against me better judgment. Yes! I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. No, you don't, old man. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. We're finally gonna... Now then. I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig. I'm an old man! Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. ta -ra now. Oh. And like that, I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me, to stop me from following in his footsteps. You failed, and so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have never given me that stone. What did we find? Oh, I want so badly to see inside this barrow. Everything is leading up to this moment. All right, I guess we should head back to town and see if we can get some people to help us, I guess. And here we are. Oh, good, the rude lady. What are you selling? Good day. Fresh produce. She's ignoring me. What have you got for sale? I'm selling meat, vegetables, and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to have a gander. I'll be sure to browse. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. 
I have no money, so there's really like no point. Apple sellers. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. I could use your muscles. Would you like to try one on the house like? I would. <gasps> Maybe we can give it to the um the goat. Yes, please. Here you are, miss. The <laughs> apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Oh. You bastard. Oh look, it's the the lady, Miss Tompkins. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am? I don't think she cares. <laughs> How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? I don't even know who that is. Who's that? The milkman. Oh. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. Hmm. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick. Aye, he employs half a bullion one way or another. Okay, how about some workers? The dudes that were chopping down trees, maybe we can get their help. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Then how is it maybe it should be a no? Any road, I must <laughs> wait here for Mr. Ambrose. <laughs> Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. But milk... I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will, but I'm going to get you that milk. I will. I bet you we get milk from the goat. Oh, goat, I've got a rotten apple with your name on it. There's a pail over here and a goat for milking. Come on, this is how this this is how it must be. Apple, apple, here you go. Apple with the goat. Here you hey go. Here you go. Would you like an apple? Yes. Yum, yum, yum. You don't know it's rotten. You're stupid. The grumpy thing isn't interested. What? Why? Okay, so not the goat then. Excuse me. I need Hello milk. again. Milk? Do you have any fresh milk going spare? Please? No, sorry. Not Time. to worry. Farewell. I came all the way out here for nothing. You're going to talk to me right before I leave, aren't you? One more thing. Okay, may m maybe, maybe Mr. Kemp has some milk. He is a barman after all. Joe, perhaps you've had enough sugar? Don't you start to know. I bet you Joe was one of the other dudes that was in the excavation. You found old Leonard, I see. Yes, finally. Milk. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? Sorry, lass. Why? None at all. Never mind. Tell me where I could get Goodbye. something. See you soon. Oh, aye, she's back again. Can't a man drink his tea in peace? There's no for you here, lass. <laughs> I'm so grumpy. Horrible man. How many more sugar cubes is he going to add to his tea? He'll have no teeth left by the end of the day. Let me have those sugar cubes. Hands <laughs> off me, sugar! Sugar cubes for the goat? I think this is supposed to be for all the patrons, sir. I said hands off! Come on, Joe. Be nice to our visitors. Ha! This place has gone to buggery! Give me the sugar, did I? Oh, I got the sugar cube. Oh, a horse. Hmm. Horse hair would make fine bowstring. Oh! Oh, we give the sugar cube to the horse or the apple to the horse. Okay. You always took my head off. All right, calm down. Have an apple. Be at peace. Hey, girl. Would you like an apple? Yum, yum, yum. It's rotten, I know, but, you know, better than nothing. She is completely indifferent. Perhaps the apple is too spoiled for her liking. How about the sugar cube? Here, girl. Eat this. I know horses eat sugar and salt and stuff, right? That's normal. Yum, yum, yum. Good girl. Yes. Hopefully that's gained some trust between us. Give me the horse hair. Oh, I don't have anything. Do I have... Can I chisel the I horse? see how that will... Damn it. Is there any knives in my crate? Perhaps I have something in here that could help me get the knife unstuck. Oh, the knife from inside. Okay. Hmm. No, there's nothing useful here. Of course not. The worm has found a new home within the holes of the rotten apple. I put the worm in the apple. Why? Am I trying to trick someone? Am I giving someone an apple? And there's a worm in it and they'll be like, Oh no, I can't believe you tricked me. I'm not strong enough to pull this out with my bare hands. 
Perhaps the your blacksmith has something to tell me. Good day. Hey up. Ooh, stuck knife. I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plough and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? Pliers, of course. A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. Very nice of him. Very nice indeed. Well, like, he's like my best friend in this town. That were a struggle. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Got any milk? Do you have any fresh milk going, Spare? I'm a blacksmith, not a cattle farmer. So you don't like milk? Quite. Because you're a blacksmith? Thanks Fine. for your time. I'm done with you. Aye. All right, let's go get some horse hair and fix this bow. I bet you we get some milk from the little Moors girl. They probably have, like, farming out there or something. Alrighty, horsey, don't mind me. Shwink. I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. Very nice. Okay, now do I use the strands with the resin, or do I need to do something with the resin first? Ooh. I didn't think we do. It looks like it's working. There we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. Nice. Oh, we're making such good progress. We're so smart. Bowstring with the fiddle bow. Fade to blank once more. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. We're pretty dang good. I guess we need to go find the girl. Hello, girl. I have a bowstring thingy for you. Fiddle bow. Look what I have for you. Okay, thanks for nothing. Bye. Oh. Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we like to hear. Very good. Oh, are we going to have a flashback? I want to... Oh. She's some sort of warlock. Strange. Oh. She drugged us. She drugged us and left us a fiddle. Very strange indeed. Was it a fey folk? My was head it a fairy? is spinning. What happened? Hello? Where did she go? <laughs> I'll take this the fiddle. girl left her fiddle behind. As payment. I'll take it with me in case I see her again. I want to understand what just happened. As do I. <sighs> the fiddle and bow, left to me by the young girl at the devil's toe. Interesting. Maybe we can use it to soothe the grumpy goat. Mr. Bryden, your goat is being mean and not letting me have its milk. Do you have anything to say about this? What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going, Spur? He is a farm. He does own a farm with livestock. <laughs> If you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Me goat. Good luck. But... You... I... I already knew that's what I needed to do. But thanks for nothing. Why are you so angry, goat? Oh, now we can pick the bucket up. I guess because we got permission? Maybe we just need to force... <laughs> Give us your milk. You, you have oh, no choice. We are doing this. You have no choice. We have no choice. Oh, that's a devil goat. Oh dear, what is happening? Why are we see why, why is this happening to us? Very strange. <laughs> this goat is definitely the devil. Did we get milk I, though? I... I'm not sure what that was. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. We need a drink. Did you get me milk? Did we get any milk? Give me I'm your not milk. not going near that thing again. Oh my gosh. How am I getting milk? I got a bucket, at least. Excuse me, Mr. Bryden. Your goat is an absolute demon. Well, did you get any milk out of her? I tried and failed miserably. <laughs> Uh, she's a temperamental beast. Perhaps you could milk her for me? Please, I really need milk. I'd like to help you, lass, but I've just had a flare up <sighs> in my joints. I've worked myself too hard this morning. I doubt it. I couldn't bend down to save myself. Is there anything I can do to help? Ah, 
My wife would say I'm beyond any help, I'm certain of that. But if you know of any remedies for aching joints, please send them my way. I'll see what I can do, Mr. Brighton. Oh, I guess we... rest for a while. ta -ra now. I guess we need to go talk to Mother Mildred to get us some sort of concoction for achy joints. But not before a flashback. Oh. Daddy, I have something for you. Oh, we're a little bit older now. I do hope you remember it. I've taken great care of it. I'll fetch it for you now, all right. What, what is it? It's a crate with a vase in it. It's the vase we dug up. Oh. Daddy, you must remember this, the day that started it all. It's the red urn you buried in the garden for me. My first ever excavation. Hmm, where should I put it? On Mother the took shelves. away all the knickknacks that used to sit on these shelves. The pot might look nicer a little closer to the light anyway. All right, then on the, the perfect spot, apparently. Perfect. <laughs> it will catch the light from your lamp so nicely. There. I'm going to become a great barrow digger, just like you. Are we, I hope the pot reminds you of those adventures we had together when I was a child, and how thankful I am for everything you've taught me. Now I must tell you about my visit to Pallinghurst. I found an arrowhead. It's rather sad. She's not known her father since she was, what, very young. Good day. Mother Mildred, please. I need yes. a remedy. Do you know of any remedies for aching joints? You're too young to be suffering from this, surely. It's for someone else, Mr. Bryden. Yes, yes. I know just the poultice. Capital. May I have some? Well, I don't have the ingredients, I'm afraid. Of course. What do you need to make it? It's a simple blend made of natural elements. An apple with a worm in it. Elderflower and flirtwort. I can make the poultice for you if you bring me these things. Then it just needs to be applied directly to the joints. That should ease his burden. Thank you. Where do Where I can find, I find these some things? Flirtwort? flirtwort is not commonly found around Bewley. It's a perennial shrub that bears small white flowers. I think I remember seeing some flowers by the brook. You might find some growing out on moors if you're lucky. Thank you. An elderflower? Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here in Hearn Wood, but they've long since gone. Nowadays, you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private garden. I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small, white, and grow in clumps on the elder shrub. Elder shrubs can grow in all shapes and sizes. Just look out for the clumps of tiny white flowers. They're both white flowers. Farewell. Damn you, Mildred. Okay, we're, uh, we've seen some flowers over here by the church. What is happening? Okay, with the father. You're coming out to drink again, Excuse father. Excuse me, Miss Bateman. I'm in something of a hurry. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. Which work is that quote from? I don't know, you're not even Romeo waiting. Romeo and Juliet. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> I don't even care. Private garden. Who has a private garden? There, a shrub with white flowers. Yes, I remember seeing this them. This looks like it might be elderflower. I'll take some. Nice. Got any milk, old lady? Do you have lady? any fresh milk going, Spare? I don't, pet. Not to worry. Where did Father Roach go? Where is go? Father Roach? You might have noticed the good father has a green thumb. He's gone to visit his friend in the countryside to purchase some seedlings for his tower garden. Tower garden? Where you is say? Father Roach's tower garden? Why, on top of St. Edmund's, of course. He's got a lovely collection of cuttings up there. You'll have to ask him to show you. It does sound rather pleasant. It's a shame he's not around. Well, he does have a spare key for the tower door somewhere. Where? Do you know where Father Roach <laughs> keeps his spare key? No, that's his business. If I did know, I'd fetch it myself and take you up there. Not to worry. I do recall him saying he hid it outside somewhere. For safekeeping, like. Were it in the graveyard? Oh, I don't know. Best wait till he gets back, pet. The graveyard, Thanks you say? Time. Lord be... In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. Romeo and Juliet? This plaque is surrounded by cracking plaster. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if... I think I can chip away at this plaster. That's why he's, he's quoting freaking Romeo and Juliet. Why is he being so coy about it, though?
There's a key behind here. This has to be Father Roach's spare. Interesting. Why was he off in such a hurry and why did he like... Why was he so secretive like that? That's so weird. Let's go check out this garden. Capital. We need this last piece of the flower so we can get the poultice so we can get the milk. <laughs> oh, how lovely. We're just going up and up and up. Ah, uh, ooh. I see some white flowers. A small label on the pot reads flirtwort. This is just what I need. Give me that. Brilliant. Off to the old woman. Miss Mildred. Good day. I've got your crap. Yes. I think I have some flirtwort here. Show me. Aye, that's flirtwort, all right. Let me know when you found some elderflower, too. I, I do, have some I do. Here. Show me. No, no, this is not elderflower. Are you freaking kidding me? It's God cow bay. It. An easy mistake to make. The two look very similar. Oh. It's safe to eat, as long as you're not a cow. Very toxic to cattle. You've got to be kidding me. Farewell. I thought we had everything we needed. Oh, child. Hello, Jane. Miss, watch me juggle. Are you juggling apples? Are we going to scare the child with the apple and the worm, aren't we? <laughs> Very impressive. I can juggle even more apples. Oh, can you juggle this one? I dare you to juggle an extra apple. We're so apple. evil. Easy. We're so evil. Yuck, a worm. <laughs> what? Okay, I know there's elder herb or something here. Let's just... Wait, just... put those back. What? Sorry. Are you kidding me? Oh, for crying out loud, do I have to switch them out? I gotta switch them out with the other ones that I got, didn't I? I gotta switch them out with the ones that look Hello like the again, ones. Little worm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's go. Fall forward again one more time, will I you? Yuck. Yes. <laughs> this... <laughs> All right. Cow's bane. Switch them out. The old switcheroo. <laughs> got them. Mother Mildred, Mother Mildred, I finally got it. Good day. Please make my poultice. I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful. Hand them over. There you go. Tell Mr. Bryden to apply this poultice to the area in question. It works wonders. Thank you very much. Thank you. I only had to do, like, some really weird stuff in order to get all this. Mr. Bryden, milk your damn goat for me, please. Yes? I've got a poultice for your joints, Mr. Bryden. It was prepared by Mildred Walker. Who? You may know her as Mother Mildred. Oh, thank you, lass. That Mildred knows what she's doing. I should have thought to see it myself. She said to apply it directly to where the pain is. It should work very swiftly. I'll give it a try. I'm just going to stick it down my pants right here in front of you. Hope you don't mind. Oh, that did the trick, lass. I feel like a lad of 20 again. I suppose you'll be wanting me to milk old Eunice for your in return. If you yes, don't please. mind, I'd appreciate it. A fair exchange. Get on to it then. I don't got all day, old man. Stand well back, lass. Believe me, I'm not coming <laughs> an inch closer. Fresh milk, yay! There you are, lass. Some fresh milk. Fresh goat's milk. Thank you. I'm just going to carry this. Thank you very this. much, Mr. Bryden. Finally, we can give this woman some milk. You have no Long idea price. what I went through to get this milk, lady. I've got a pail of fresh milk here for you, Miss Tompkins. You haven't. Oh, wow. Here. It's still Mom, warm. you've saved my height. Thank you. Are you all right? I'm worried about Mr. Ambrose. Any road, I'm heading back to Panswick Manor now. Would you still like to meet his lordship? Yes, please. Very much so. Now, I can't guarantee you'll be home, all right? He's a very busy man. I'll take my chances. Bet you it's that James, dude. Follow me, then. Bet you anything. Come on over. It's not much further. See, the guy was over there painting. Hey. Oh. Grumpy old maid. What time do you call this? Sorry, ma'am. Give it here, then. <laughs> I 
<laughs> what the hell is this muck? Goat's milk, ma'am. You daft bit. Since when does his lordship take goat's milk with his tea? Oh, he will not be pleased. Get back to your sweeping before I clip you over the head. Sorry, ma'am. Oh dear. I think we got her in trouble, didn't we? Sorry about that. Well, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. I've been going on a little bit longer than I actually intended to. It took some critical thinking in order to get to the solutions to some of those puzzles, but we got there. And now we are finally at Penswick Manor, and we can finally at some point see who this Lord Penswick is. I think it's James. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think is going on. Let me know who you think Lord Penswick is. Is it James? Is it someone else? Is it a ghost? Does he even exist? And if you're new to the channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe. And as always, thank you so very much for watching. You've been awesome. Let's play again soon, and I'll see you in the next video.